Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wooler for the Mitochondria Mastery Course. This is a course content sample video for the Mitochondrial Mastery Course. The title here is Mold Toxin Exposure and Mitochondrial Dysfunction. So one of the things to understand about mitochondria is they're more than just the energy factories in our cells, which they clearly are and very important but they're functioning throughout our entire body and there's growing research now that has been evolving over the past many years of the impact of mitochondrial problems on various types of disorders and diseases so this is very true in neurodegenerative diseases like alzheimer's and parkinson's disease cardiovascular conditions diabetes metabolic syndrome gastrointestinal disorders which is quite interesting uh, certainly chronic fatigue, which makes sense, musculoskeletal problems, and even autoimmune diseases and neurobehavioral and psychiatric conditions like autism, for example, it's been well known that mitochondrial dysfunction plays a significant role in those individuals' health issues. So this is just a sampling of research that is looking at mitochondrial problems and associated diseases and conditions. Now, when we look at mycotoxins, these are mold toxins of various forms, and there's different types, okra toxin, for example, T2 toxin. Um, some of these are very toxic. In fact, some of these toxins are considered to be some of the most potent biological toxins that are known in the natural world. Now, when you combine that with the impact on the mitochondria, and at a fundamental level, the mitochondria are about producing energy, that energy being ATP, that cellular energy currency that all of our body needs, all the cells, for example, need in order for them to function normally. And so when we purely look at things from a nutritional standpoint, whether it's fats, carbohydrates, or proteins, so much of it funnels down to the level of what's called acetyl coenzyme A, which is one of the main entry points into the citric acid cycle for eventual production of ATP within the electron transport chain. Now, it's very interesting in that fats and carbs, their, their primary utilization, if you will, very simplistic, is to actually generate energy. Protein, for example, has a lot of other roles in the body. So its primary purpose isn't to be used for energy production purposes. However, it can be certainly through certain amino acids that can enter the citric acid cycle, either through acetyl coenzyme A or other entry points into the citric acid cycle. Now, when I say citric acid cycle, that also means Krebs cycle. And as we enter the Krebs cycle, the main area here is oxaloacetate combining with acetyl coenzyme A to make citric acid. But there are some other entry points too, whether it's uh, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl coenzyme A, fumaric acid, for example. What ends up happening is as we move from one step to the next, we end up creating other chemical reactions like NADH, for example. You could think of NADH as a chemical bridge between the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And so the entry point for NADH occurs at complex one or NADH dehydrogenase. And that is the initiating point of electron train, uh, transport chain activity. What's interesting, if you just think of the name electron transport chain, Essentially what's happening is we're transferring electrons through a different chemical, different chemical reactions down a chain. So it's transporting electrons through these different uh, chain reactions. And at the same time, we're moving electrons, we're getting an outward pumping of protons or hydrogen ions into this inner membrane space. And what ends up happening is we get an accumulation of these hydrogen ions that sits on top of this ATP synthase and creates an electrical chemical gradient that moves through that chamber. You get a rotational effect of these oval shaped proteins that form 
ATP. And that's a very simplistic view of the electron transport chain, but that's fundamental in the production of ATP in the mitochondria. Now, in the Mitochondria Mastery course, we go into all of these steps in very detailed fashion. And we talk about things clinically and also about what can happen from a nutritional standpoint and how to remedy some of these situations. What's very interesting though, when we think of the, in the context of mycotoxins or mold toxins, is there is a chemical that sits on the outer edge of this inner membrane. This chemical called cytochrome C acts as an electron transfer, uh, transfer between complex three and complex four of the electron transport chain. And it's strategically placed at the outer membrane of the inner mitochondrial membrane for a reason. What happens is when the mitochondria is under stress, now, whether it's something that is attacking the membrane or we're getting some type of dysfunction that's occurring biochemically within the membrane, it turns out that cytochrome C gets released from the inner mitochondrial membrane and that acts as a trigger for something called uh, apoptosis or cell death. So this was just a paper looking at various mycotoxins and their negative impact on mitochondria, triggering a release of cytochrome C. Cytochrome C then activates a series of enzymes called caspases, and caspases lead to apoptosis. So why would that occur? Well, if the cell is damaged or diseased, we want to get rid of it to make room for a new type of cell or new type of mitochondria, for example. So the inherent wisdom of the body actually has a process to get rid of old, damaged, and diseased cells. The same thing with mitochondria, for example. And so apoptosis is a natural process that occurs to get rid of a cell. And that occurs through the release of cytochrome C. And it's not just mycotoxins that can do that. There's other uh, chemical reactions that can cause the release of cytochrome C. Gliotoxin is a very common mycotoxin produced by aspergillus mold. Now, a lot of us are exposed to aspergillus, but not all of us are carrying toxic levels of gliotoxin. So for example, this marker here, gliotoxin almost 40,000, which is extremely high, actually comes from a Great Plains Laboratory mycotox profile. And one of the things that gliotoxin does is it attacks the mitochondria and we get a release of cytochrome C, which then can trigger apoptosis. And so this was a paper that was specifically looking at gliotoxin and the effect in inducing cell suicide of a cell in relationship to elevations of gliotoxin. So this is one of the ways that gliotoxin can cause damage. Okra toxin is a very common mycotoxin, comes from aspergillus mold. You'll commonly see it in many people. One of the things it does is it causes toxicity in the kidneys. It can also cause liver problems. It's also carcinogenic. And if we think about the mitochondria as the energy factories in our cells, that also means our immune system. And when the immune system becomes compromised or the mitochondria within various immune cells become compromised, well, our immune system also takes a hit. And some of that can just be part of the immune system that surveys our body with regards to infection and cancer cells. Okay, so okra toxin being produced by aspergillus mold creates pores in the inner mitochondrial membrane. It can generate reactive oxygen species that damage, damage the function of the mitochondria. And because of that damage, it can cause a release of cytochrome C that induces apoptosis. 
One of the things we go into great detail within the mitochondria mastery course is how to evaluate an organic acid test in relation to mold exposure. So for example, this is actually a snapshot of page one of the Great Plains Laboratory organic acid test looking at the yeast and fungal markers. And there are four markers on this test that are representative of colonization from aspergillus mold. So we got number two, four, five, and six. So 5-hydroxymethyl-2-furoric, furan-2,5-decarboxylic, furan-carbonylglycine, and tartaric. And you can see in this individual, they have all four elevated, which means we've got gut colonization from aspergillus mold in the environment. There's another marker that's also representative of mold exposure to fusarium mold, this marker here called tricarboxylic. And it's well known that mold and mycotoxin exposure can generate all kinds of problems in the mitochondria that get represented on an organic acid test. So for example, elevations of lactic acid are very common in mycotoxin exposure. Succinic acid, interestingly enough, which is part of complex two of the electron transport chain, as well as the Krebs cycle, can also be influenced by mycotoxins. It can also be influenced negatively by chemicals and heavy metals as well. So part of the course is to actually go through some of the different sequences here on organic acid testing to determine mitochondrial problems. And what you'll see in many people with mold exposure is that the mitochondria are having problems which can be either causative or contributing to their underlying health condition. Now I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler, the instructor for the mitochondria mastery course. I've been an integrative and functional medicine physician since the late 90s. I do a tremendous amount of speaking throughout the U.S. as well as internationally. I've written a number of uh, integrative health books, educator, as well as a practicing clinician. I do clinical education for Great Plains Laboratory as well as our integrative medicine academy, which hosts the mitochondria mastery course as well as other mastery courses that we have. I'm also co-founder and education director for Integrated Medicine Academy, as well as Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds, which is a membership site for healthcare practitioners. And then in my own practice, I have worked with the autism community for many decades. I've also worked with patients with chronic and environmental induced health conditions. So again, this is sample content for material that is discussed in the Mitochondria Mastery course. For more information, please check out the information about the Mitochondria Mastery course on the homepage. You can go to mitochondriamasterycourse.com. Again, this is Dr. Kurt Wooler for the Mitochondria Mastery course. Thank you.